and welcome to San Francisco. I'm Captain David with Spinnaker Sailing here at Pier 40. Today's video is for our students who are prepping for their basic keelboat class and those who want to come by and take a look at it to review the Andrews 21. We're going to go over parts of the boat, their names, and their functions. So let's get started. The pointy end of the boat is the bow. Now some boats, like this boat, have a bow pulpit. The back end of the boat is the stern, and this would be considered the stern pulpit. The lines that go around the boat on both sides and are covered by this blue padding are the lifelines. And the lifelines are supported by stanchions. The area below the deck line is the hull, and these are fenders. The big stick in the middle, well, that's the mast but it needs to be supported to handle the pressure caused by the wind. Well, the support comes from shrouds and stays. So let's take a look at those. So the support system made up of shrouds and stays, we start with the shrouds. We have four shrouds. We have two lower and two uppers. The upper shrouds are pushed out by the spreaders. That creates a greater angle and more tension for support. Our shrouds support the mast against sideways movement, but we also need to support the mast from going forward or backwards. That's done with the stays, so let's take a look at those. This is the forestay. It attaches at the bow and to the mast. It prevents the mast from falling backwards, and it's also what we attach the jib to. This is our backstay. It supports the mast and keeps it from falling forward. It has other functions as well, but we'll cover that in another video. So the shrouds and the stays comprise what we call the standing rigging. Rule number one in boating is always at least one hand for the boat. Because the boat will rock while you step on and off, we always announce stepping on or stepping off. Remember the shrouds? These are the shrouds. This is our stepping on point, and this is what I'm going to hold on to as I board the boat. Stepping on, and then my hand goes immediately to the mast. Now, if I need to work my way around the other side, I can switch hands. And now I'm going to work my way to the next shroud, then the boom, and then I can just work my way right into the cockpit nice and safe. So remember, the purpose of this video is to get you familiar with terms and parts of the boat. The next thing we're going to move on to is once you're on the boat, one of the first things you're going to do is open up the companionway. The companionway has two companionway covers. So I'm going to remove those and then just go put them into a dock box. These are the covers. One slides out, and one pulls out. So we've covered the standing rigging. Now let's go over the sails and the running rigging. The Andrews 21 is a sloop rigged boat, meaning it has two sails. It has a mainsail and a headsail at the bow. Yes, I said headsail. I said headsail because that is the generic term for a sail at the bow. While there are many types of headsails, the most common are the jib and the genoa. The area between the forestay and the mast is called the fore triangle. The sail that flies between the two is a jib. Now that jib could come all the way to the mast, or it could be progressively smaller. If that sail that is flying here extends beyond the mast, we now have a genoa. It can come just a little bit past the mast or extend much further. I've already attached our jib. It has been what's called hanked on. These are hanks and they get hanked on to the forestay. We just took a look at the jib. This is our mainsail. But before we get into the running rigging, let's review the parts of the sail the three edges, and the three attachment points. 
Both the mainsail and the headsail have three edges. The leading edge, the edge in the front, is the luff. Here is the luff on the jib, and here is the luff on the main. The back edge is the leech. Think of the wind leeching off the sail to the back of the boat. Here is the leech on the jib, and here is the leech on the main. The foot is the bottom edge. Here's the foot on the jib, and here's the foot on the main. Each sail also has three attachment points. The tack is at the corner of the luff and foot. Think of the tack as a semi-permanent connection at the front of the sail. Here's the tack on the jib, and here's the tack on the main. At the corner of the leech and foot is the clue. Here's the clue on the jib, and here's the clue on the main. Our final attachment point is the head. This is where halyards are attached. Here's the head on the jib, and here it is on the main. Now, let's combine the parts of the sail with the running rigging. Our jib is ready to be raised, but we have to attach a line to that. That line is called a halyard. It raises and lowers the sail. In this case, it would be the jib halyard. Our jib halyard is at the mast. What I'm going to do is release it from the cleat that holds it, and I'm going to break the bowline that is right here and this is where we put it to bed at the end of sailing. And I'm going to take that slack and I'm going to bring it to the head of the jib and attach it with a bowline. Now, if you don't know how to tie a bowline, remember there's a video, the seven knots you need to know for your ASA test. So I'm going to make my rabbit hole first. I'm going to go through this quickly because you can watch that video. There. So our halyard is attached. Since we're not raising it right now because we're still at the dock, I'm just going to come back to where it is at the mast, take a little slack out, and pop it into that cleat that you just saw a second ago. So the jib is now all set for raising. Let's move on to the main. Most main halyards, like our jib halyard, are located at the mast, but specific to the Andrews 21, the bitter end or the raising end of it is below deck. So we have to go down there first and uncleat that so it can actually work with the halyard. This is our main halyard, but also back here is our topping lift. The topping lift does is it supports the boom when the sail is not up. And I'm mentioning that topping lift because it may be on your test. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the main halyard, it's attached with a shackle, and we're going to go attach that to the head of the main. So with that attached, I can now grab the bitter end of the halyard, which has fallen down below, so I'm going to grab that. If you recall, we already uncleated that. Slack is coming out. I'm not going to hoist it. I just want a little tension on it, and then I'm going to use my jib sheet cleat and just stick it back there, and now it's easy to grab for raising. Great. Both halyards have been attached, both the jib and the main halyard, and we use those for raising and lowering the sail. But we also need to control the sails. So what hasn't been attached are sheets, specifically the jib sheets. So let's go forward and take a look at the jib again. So these are our jib sheets. I've already attached them, okay, and I attached them with a bowline. You'll learn how to do that in your class. But the sheets are right here. There's one for each side, because remember, we are controlling the sail. These sheets then run back to the cockpit, and they go through a series of fair leads. Another word for your test. A fair lead is anything that redirects a line. So this is coming back from the jib, 
It's running through a block here, generically known as a fair lead. It's coming to another block, again, generically known as a, yes, fair lead, right to here. Now we have fair lead, uh, <laughs> now we have jib sheets on both sides, and now we can control that sale when we go from attack or a jibe or need to trim the sales. So if we have sheets that control the jib, what do we have to control the main? Correct, a main sheet. So let's move on to the main sheet next. This is our main sheet. It runs through a block and tackle system. What that does is it gives us greater purchase for pulling on this when the sail is loaded with wind. By releasing it from the cam cleat, the sheet will let the sail go out, and if I pull on it, bring it back to the center line. Then I can just pop it right in there, and it's set. That's our main sheet. As you can see, we've raised the main. Now I can show you three other lines in our running rigging. The first one I want to show you is the Cunningham, or the downhaul. This is the Cunningham. We use this to tension the luff of the sail. We also use it in the reefing process. And yes, we have a video on reefing. So this is how the Cunningham works. So using the Cunningham, you're going to have to sort of balance the halyard and the Cunningham itself. So now I have the main right where I want it. So I'm going to get the Cunningham or downhaul and get it into the bottom cringle. Now right here, as I pull on this, it's going to tighten that. But now I want to get a little more halyard. Now I can tighten it, and that's about right where I want it. So now I need to cleat it off. So as I cleat it off, I'm going to start by going around the top, around the bottom, and then I can spin this with one hand. Yes, that takes practice, but now you can see I have good tension. I can get a little more pull with the halyard, and that's all set. Now, obviously, I have to go down below and cleat this off. So, the Cunningham or downhaul is another line we use uh, in our running rigging. So two other lines in the running rigging are the outhaul and the boom vang. The first one I'm going to show you is the outhaul, but mo both of them are mostly used in heavier winds. What the outhaul is going to do is going to pull on the clue of the main and tighten the foot. So right here is the outhaul. It has a clam cleat right there that'll catch on when you're done. So right now it's loose. The sail is loose. So I'm going to start pulling on that. Okay, so go ahead back there. And as I pull, you can see that clue going back a bit. And now you can see the foot of the sail is tight. If I release it, you can see that it's baggy again. So the next line that we have is the boom vang. And what that's going to do, it's going to pull down even more on the boom than just the sheet. And what it's going to do is close off the leech of the main or make that tighter. Again, it's something that we're going to do more in heavier winds. And you'll learn about that in your classes. But I just want you to see the boom vang, which is right here. Tensions the boom. This is the system right here. Again, it's a block and tackle system. So as I pull, you can see it starts tensioning. Now if I pull harder, you may see the boom come down a bit. There you go. Again, it's for closing off the leech of the main. But we'll go over that in, uh, in your class and maybe in a future video. So we've covered uh, parts of the boat, the names of them, how it functions, as well as the standing rigging and the running rigging. The last two things that I want to take a look at is the outboard and the tiller. So let's do that. As far as the outboard is concerned, we already have two videos on there.
the starting procedures for the Andrews 21, as well as the four oh no moments. So check that out. It's pretty thorough. Now, the thing that students find the most mysterious, new sailors, is the tiller. Well, the tiller's a little weird. I can't give you the perfect rule of thumb of how to master the tiller, but think of it this way. Wherever you want to go, the tiller is going to go in the opposite direction. This is our tiller, and it is connected directly to the rudder below the boat. This is our extension stick. It just gives us a little bit more reach so we're not dragging our body across. So back to steering. If I want to go to the right or the starboard side, I'm going to push the tiller to the left. Seems a little counterintuitive, but that's how it works. If I bring it back to center, we call that neutral. Now, if I want to go to the left side or port, I'm going to bring that tiller to the right side, and the boat is going to turn to the left. It's a little mysterious. That's really the best way that I can describe it. Well, I hope you found this video helpful. We're trying to set you up for your ASA 101, and we've covered a lot of terms. But just remember, as a new sailor, this is all a foreign language. I know I've said it before, but it's still true. So get out there, enjoy your class, and we look forward to seeing you. So until next time, cheers.